What's going on guys? I decided to make this video because there are a few films coming out this fall that I am either curious or excited to look forward to. Like, there are some other films like RRR that I'm trying to watch and review so that I can have it on my channel, but there are also some films that are coming out either in theaters or digitally on like Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, Disney Plus that I do want to see and I'm very excited for, so this isn't going to be like for every film that comes out in the fall, it's just going to be for certain films that I'm excited for and also, admittedly, some films I'm not all that excited for, but I am curious to see if they're actually good when they come out. Now, I'm not saying all of these films are going to be good, because I know some of them could either be pretty terrible or mediocre, but I'm hoping that there will be some that will be pretty good, or at least enjoyable. Now, I am unfortunately going to skim past some of the films that came out in September, like Blonde and Clerks 3, because those already came out, and I am going to re review Blonde when that comes out, so stay tuned for that. So, it's only going to be for ones that haven't come out yet. Okay, first off, Amsterdam. I'm looking forward to this because the plot does sound interesting, and the cast and director do get me on board. Like, you have David O. Russell, who is a very talented director for films like Silver Linings Playbook, American Hustle, and The Fighter, and you have actors like Christian Bale, Margot Robbie, Anya Taylor-Joy, and the list goes on. All of that does sound like this could be a pretty fun film to see in the theaters. Next up is Glass Onion. In case if you don't know what that is, Glass Onion is a sequel to the 2019 film Knives Out, directed by Ryan Johnson, who comes back to direct this film, and Daniel Craig comes back for this film as well. And the trailer looks awesome, and the cast as well do get me pretty excited when it comes on Netflix, and I hope this one ends up being as good as Knives Out. Next up is a movie I'm not super excited for, but I am hoping it's actually a lot of fun. Black Adam, starring The Rock. I mean, the trailers do make it look like it's going to be a fun action film, and I do like The Rock. I think he brings a lot of charisma in a lot of the newer films he's in, and I hope this one is enjoyable. Next film I'm going to mention is one I am super excited for, and that is Wendell and Wild. That one is a claymated anime film that's going to be released on Netflix that's directed by Henry Selleck, who did The Nightmare Before Christmas and Coraline. They are both fantastic animated films, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how he does this film while he's also writing the screenplay with Jordan Peele, who's also starring in this film with Keegan-Michael Key, so that should be really fun. And it's also confirmed to be PG-13, so that means this movie is going to be pretty terrifying. Now we're moving on to November, and the first film I'm going to mention coming out in November is The Fablements, Steven Spielberg's next film. And if you have no idea who Steven Spielberg is, and then... Really? Are you serious? The plot does sound like it could be good, and the trailer makes it look like it's going to be really good, so I'm hoping that this film does end up becoming one of Spielberg's best films in recent years, so hopefully, i got my fingers crossed right now, so I'm hoping that this one is good. Next movie in November I am curious to see is Disney's next anime film, Strange World. The trailer does make it look good, and the animation looks spectacular, so I'm hoping that this one is a fun watch in the theater. Now this next November film is one I am curious about, but I'm also nervous about, and that film is Black Panther Wakanda Forever. I do enjoy the first Black Panther film. I think it's a really fun watch, and I do like Chadwick Boseman as Black Panther. And after the tragic and unexpected death of Boseman, I'm not sure they'll be able to nail this next Black Panther film without him. I mean, you can't do a Black Panther film without the Black Panther himself. That's kind of a bad idea. But I'm hoping they'll be able to nail this one. The trailer makes it look like it's going to be good, and hopefully this will do good at paying respect to Bozeman as the Black Panther. So hopefully this one will be good. Hopefully, we'll just have to wait and see. 
Now we're moving on to December, and one film I'm not super excited for, but I am hoping it's actually good, Avatar The Way of Water. And the reason I say that is because I'm not a huge fan of the original Avatar film. I think it's a little overrated. I don't hate it. I don't think it's a terrible film. It has great visuals. It has a really good score, too, but for me... I think it's overrated because the story is a little similar to Pocahontas and Dances with Wolves, and the human characters in that film aren't all that interesting. But I'm hoping that the second film does improve some of those issues and make the characters well-written, and James Cameron's back directing it after doing 13 years of trying to make scripts for his Avatar sequel, so let's hope this one is actually maybe even better than the original film in regards to characters. And the last film I'm going to mention on this list for the fall is Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Now, I am a fan of Guillermo del Toro's work. I love his two Hellboy films, and I love Pan's Labyrinth, and I'm curious to see his take on a claymated anime Pinocchio film. The trailer does look amazing, and I'm hoping that this does become one of his best films. And I know they're probably not going to do this for the film, but... I'm curious to see if they actually do this, like, after seeing the Robert Zemeckis film, imagine if they actually do Pleasure Island with this one. Like, how terrifying would that be, seeing Pleasure Island done in a claimated anime Guillermo del Toro Pinocchio film? Like, that would actually be pretty scary to see, and at the same time, pretty cool, so... We'll have to see if they actually do that, but if they don't, then I am still hoping it's still great without it. And those are the films I am anticipated slash skeptical for for the fall of 2022. And if there's any other film I forgot to mention or ones that you're looking forward to, which ones are they? Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> and as always, if you like this review, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a thing. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.